Welcome to Sand City Sports. I am your host, the Cape Cod Kid, artist formerly known as Andre King, and we're back again to bring you all the sports and current events news stories that you need to know. Once again, we're very happy to be joined by Mr. Drew Pops. Drew Popolo. Got you. In the building. And we have a lot to get into, and so we're just going to get it started. Boston Bruins uh, won game one yesterday at a Stanley Cup uh, championship right here in Boston. Uh, it's very exciting. Uh, but for two basketball people, I, I, I need to ask, Drew, uh, do you see a difference between the culture of the Boston Bruins and the culture of the Boston uh, Celtics? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, especially this year. They're both storage franchises, but, I mean, the Bruins clearly have that grit, that toughness that the Celtics, I hoped that they would have. I'm repping them right now. Indeed, indeed. They did not have it, petered out way too soon. Um, yeah, I think it's a huge difference. They play together, the Bruins. It's all for one. And the Celtics were pretty much just a bunch of egos, you know, on one team, there was no togetherness. No togetherness. The Bruins are uh, overall favorites uh, going into the Stanley Cup, but I noticed that the score was 2-2 two -two in, the, even, second, in the second quarter. It was even 1-0. It was 1-0. So, so they were Losing. behind. They were behind. Then they fought back to tie the game. And then I look at the paper uh, this morning. I saw they won 4-2. You Shut know, up. so we had a situation where uh, you have a heavy favorite um, that's going in with these high expectations. They don't necessarily meet expectations to start. They're actually losing on their home ice. They fight back to tie the game, and then they go ahead to win rather convincingly by two goals. I mean, two-goal lead. I mean, that, that, that's a pretty – That's good. That's, I, that, I think one was an empty net, but – Okay, okay. But so still, still, still. You won by two goals. You, you, it's all good. You win by two goals, again, when you have the expectations. You don't meet them to start with, but you fight back, and then you finish, and, and, and it seems like everything, everything is gravy. Um, that seems to parallel the Celtics season uh, almost exactly in terms, but the Celtics seem to react very differently when they meet when they met adversity. When the Bruins meet the adversity, their whole mentality seems like it's like you know, when the going gets tough, the tough get going. And the Celtics, when the times got tough for them, they just I don't know, they folded. They they had no toughness at all. It was abysmal and pathetic. To begin the season, um, the Celtics did not respond well uh, to adversity. I didn't really see much of a, a, of a difference going into the All-Star break. Really, the team only started to catch their uh, stride towards the end of the season. They had some good wins against Indiana. Yeah. You know, and going into the Indiana series, obviously the Indiana series went the way that they wanted. But then again, in the Milwaukee series, uh, you win game one, uh, you lose game two, and then it, 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 it was, it was wheels, all downhill from wheels there. Wheels fell right off. You know, um, the Boston Bruins, they had the second best record in the NHL. Uh, the Celtics had the 10th best record in the NBA. Uh, do we think that this is because of a lack of talent? Or once again, does it come down to a difference in culture? I think hockey's a little more open than the NBA is. I think that you have... a a little more underdog chance to win in hockey. It's more like anybody's game. You got, in the NBA, it's like, I mean, look at the Warriors. No one's been able to stop them for like four years now. So I think that the Bruins, I mean, they, the team above them, the Lightning, Indeed. broke records for how many wins they had 62 this year. wins. Yeah. So it's crazy. Yes. And they petered out in the first, I think they got swept. They did. In the first round, which is insane. Yeah. So it just goes to show that, you know, hockey, it, it's anybody's game. And I think that the Bruins were like, okay, now that they're out of our way, I mean, nobody can, nobody can stop us. You see this uh, quote reference a lot of times when it comes to, to football, uh, but I want to make the comparison to hockey but also, and, and, and also ba basketball. They say football is a game, is a game of skill. Okay, but more than that, it's a game of will. Okay, it's a game of skill, but beyond that, it's a game of will. You referenced the Tampa Bay Lightning, best record uh, overall in the NHL, 62 wins. Okay, and they get knocked out. Okay, it's crazy. In the first Insane. round, in four straight. Uh, back to the Celtics, uh, and and back to. Does that team have skill? Do we have? Uh, do the Celtics do, have skill? Do, 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 do they have skill? 
I see you have the jersey on. On paper, absolutely. Is Kyrie Irving skilled? He's one of the Is most Jason skilled players Tatum I've skilled? ever seen. But they just didn't mash. It seems like the Bruins, they they just mesh. There's no like clash of egos. It's just next man up, do your job. Mm. It's like a Patriots-esque mentality. Mm. And with the Celtics, it was just, I want mine. Mm. I'm worried about next year's contract. Mm. I want this and that. Me, me, me. You can't win if you have the me, me, me attitude. Agreed. That's it. Um, so we got guys out there fighting for each other, yeah. not against each other. Um, we have guys out there who seem to respect the Boston history, mm -hmm. Boston tra tradition. Uh, and we have a team that's only three wins away uh, from Stanley Cup Championship. And from, you know, I think a lot, this, this has to do with, again, uh, to me, it, it's about the culture. Okay, that is the foundation, you know, for this outstanding success. Uh, along with the talent. The, the Bruins are talented, but again, if they, if they were the most talented team in the NHL, they would have the best record in the NHL, okay? And they didn't uh, by, I think it was over, over 10 games. I think, yeah. they, I think they won 49 games. Uh, Tampa Bay won 62 games. Yes. So you know, the, the, oh the, the difference, it, it wasn't, um, but Tampa Bay has been on vacation for well over a month. A while, yeah. Okay, and we have uh, game two uh, tomorrow night in the Boston Garden uh, with, with the Bruins being three wins away from the championship, okay? Not necessarily a hockey person. Shout out to Tim Luce, uh, flag man. Uh, we need to get him in here. Uh, and some others out there who, who know hockey inside and out. We want you on the program. But as a sports person you know, and, and following these stories, uh, you, you have to respect the success and you have to wonder where that success comes from. You know, I noticed that the Bruins, uh, the first round series, went to game seven. Yeah. 4-3 uh, against uh, the Toronto Maple Leafs. Uh, round two went to six games. Uh, against the Columbus Blue Jackets, you know, and then in the conference finals, they, they, they swept. But th th this has not been a cakewalk in the playoffs. No, they've had tough games, and they somehow just, they do what it takes to get it done. And that's what the Celtics didn't do. Do what it takes to get it done. Uh, and they, again, if it's one man that's out there, you know, fighting against the, the trials and travails that, that, that you're going to experience in life, it's going to be tough, Okay. But if you're a part of a team, if you're a part of a, uh, a crew, excuse me, if you're a part, you know, of an organization uh, that you believe in and that believes in you, uh, it makes it a lot easier uh, to face these challenges uh, and, and these battles that you have to go through, you know, in, in order to eventually uh, reach the top of the mountain. So uh, your thoughts on the Stanley Cup uh, championship? Do you, do you feel can, can, the, can the Blues come back or, you know, is, is this Boston's uh, Stanley Cup to lose? Uh, I mean, after, you know, I was working last night, I look up the TV, it's one nothing St. Louis already, and I was like, oh, well, maybe it's, it's not going to be as easy as everyone in Boston thinks. And then as the game goes on, you know, we know how it went, 4-2, whatever. I think that they just got the juice right now. I think that they want – the Sox already did it, the Pats already did it. They're like, you know what, I want – we're going to all be laughing at the Celtics, and we're going to be having our championship parade, and they get nothing. I think the Bruins – they got the juice. They have the momentum. They have the swagger. Um, they, you know, they, they, they have the, the, the track record. Uh, and so I'm going to agree with you. I, I do think it's the, the Bruins uh, championship to lose. Uh, but nonetheless, you know, you don't want to count your uh, chickens before they're hatched. Pull Paul Pierce. You, know, you, know, you don't want to, to get too far ahead of yourself. But, you know, if, if they maintain this same um, blue collar, you know, all for one, uh, you know, we're doing it for the city you know, for, you know, the, the emblem on our jersey, I think they're going to be uh, A-OK, -okay and, and, and I think they should get it done. I think it'll be a good, I think it'll be a good series, you know. Um, but, you know, that, that, my point is, that is, the found, that's the foundation, that's the formula. Those are the ingredients that you need, you know, to be successful in sports or in any avenue of life, you know. And we keep uh, harping on the Celtics, coming back to the Celtics, you know, and, and, and that's, the point that I'm trying to make and a lot of people are trying to make. That's what was missing, okay? It, it, it's the heart, okay, and the desire. Uh, and, and if you don't have that, uh, you know, you, you're not going to be successful it, it, it regardless of what you do, you know? Um, and the Bruins have it, and we, and we look for them to continue uh, to be successful. Now switching over uh, to a subject matter that we know uh, a little bit more about, uh, hoops. Uh, multiple reports today have stated that Kyrie Irving is leaning towards receptive to open-minded about going to the Lakers. Uh, what do you think about this, Drew? I don't really believe much that the media says. I think that they just throw out 
a bunch of garbage left and right just to get people talking because they got nothing else to talk about on the NBA right now. I mean, I could see it. I could see it not happening. I don't know why he would want to go there after his whole thing with LeBron in Cleveland and maybe he wants to be the big shot in L.A. and what. I don't know. If he really wants to win like he said he does, I don't really think the Lakers is the place. They kind of seem like they're a little in desperation mode. But, I mean, that fourth pick doesn't hurt. They could use his leverage and get mm-hmm. something good. They have assets, too. So, I mean, it's just like the Celtics. I think it's going to be a new-look Laker team next year. I think it's going to be a new-look Celtics team next year because they both have a ton of assets. It's going to be a drastic different landscape in the NBA. And he could go there. But even if he does, whatever. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm displeased with him. If he stays, <laughs> if he stays, I mean, he's one of the most unreal talents I've seen. But the whole locker room thing and the way he pretty much gave up in that series against Milwaukee, I'm, I'm 50-50 on him. It's like... Whatever, do what you feel, Kyrie. Yeah, for me, um, the connection that has been noted between uh, Kyrie and Kobe Bryant, I think is substantive. Um, You know, Kyrie, not only personality-wise, I think mirrors Kobe Bryant. They are much more uh, lone wolves, uh, much more people that prefer to kind of go it uh, by themselves, a little bit distant, you know, off to themselves, uh, you know, but in the arena, you know, on the court, uh, both absolute junkyard dogs when they're in, I, I mean, obviously Kobe, there's much like qu- less question. Kyrie yeah. has had his ups and downs. Um, He's got to prove it still. Yeah, but uh, so, you know, if, if, if it's Kobe's the one that's doing the recruiting, you know, which is what the reporting is suggesting, you know, I, you know, would think that that would be something that, that's notable. Uh, for all the points that you mentioned, Drew, the, uh, the, the Lakers are an absolute dumpster fire. Uh, they have no leadership. They have no uh, direction. You know, obviously, uh, they have quite a bit of star power, you know, with, uh, with LeBron, you know, and with the Bus family and, of course, being in Hollywood. You know, but in terms of what goes into a good organization, uh, the Lakers are at the other end of the spectrum um, from the Toronto Raptors. Yeah. Okay. And they uh, have two head coaches, which yeah, yeah, yeah. is they, bizarre. You, you know, you have, you, have, you have a head coach and then you have a head coach in waiting, you know. So we'll see how that works at, at the NBA level. Um, but for... Uh, you know, some of these reports, you know, from, uh, you know, if it's, if it's just one news outlet, then, you know, we, we can dismiss it. But for multiple news outlets and many respected reporters uh, to be, you know, chiming, you know, uh, getting out the same uh, storyline, uh, I, I think it has legs. And, you know, what, what makes it real is that, you know, people, you know, sometimes stars can only respect people who they feel are at their level. You know, yeah. and, uh, you know, when, when it's Kobe Bryant that's talking, you know, I feel he has the ear, yeah, you know, of, of, of most stars and, and, and people in the NBA. And that would be something that, you know, if, if he's leading the charge, I think Kyrie, uh, you know, might, might listen, you know, could end up in L.A., which would definitely uh, help them from, you know, where they are right now. And, and uh, it would be an interesting storyline for, for the league. Obviously, the NBA would be happy, you know, with the Lakers oh, yeah. uh, returning uh, to the playoffs at least you know, and to prominence maybe uh, after that. Okay, I know we we talked a lot about the Lakers. This is Sand City Sports. Okay, what does Kyrie leaving uh, mean for the Celtics? We talked about it a little bit, but, you know, if it's getting, you know, if the the, the reports are that he's heading out of Boston, you know, what does that mean for the Celtics? Maybe you see a sign and trade, which would be crazy. Maybe that the Lakers are like, all right, we want him, but he wants that extra money that I think if they do a sign and trade, he will get a little more out of, is that true? I think that's that's one hundred percent true. Okay. If he walked so, in, and, and if he walked that thirty million dollars, the Celtics would not have access to that. But if it was a sign and trade, which would be beneficial for Kyrie Irving and the Celtics, the Celtics would then have access uh, to that thirty million dollars. They would be able to, to spend it on uh, another another player. Maybe you see those two, you know, storied franchises say, "Hey, this could work out for the both of us. We'll sign trade him to you. Give us one of the billion assets that you guys have, Indeed. and then we'll take that asset and we'll push it off to the Pelicans or." If he did, whatever. Okay. But, I mean, there's, if he goes, he goes. And I'm not really, I'm, I'm a Celtics fan wearing the jersey. Right. I, I wouldn't really care too much if he went. I'd love to see him stay. But after the whole, after the whole debacle in the playoffs, it's like maybe it just is a bad fit and less is more. We bring somebody else in and we move on. It's not like we were that much better with him. I mean, we didn't even make it as far. Indeed, so. you brought up a great point. That number four pick. Uh, would be quite valuable oh, yeah. um, to the Celtics, not just in terms of uh, 
building up uh, their culture. I think it's fair to say that Brad Stevens uh, does a much better job developing uh, young players into stars rather than dealing with star players. Um, but, you know, the number four pick, maybe you throw in uh, a Brandon Ingram, who's kind of, you know, yeah. in no man's yeah. land. Uh, you know, uh, Lonzo, I don't know, necessarily think that we would need or, you know, I think that Terry or Marcus Smart, you know, we, we, we kind of have the point guard. Yeah, but Terry's going to be gone, I think. Oh, you know, but then Maybe again, again, you know, Lonzo coming to Boston. Yeah, it'd be interesting. Under, under Brad Stevens' leadership, so that. He's uh, like a Rondo. Yeah, he, you know, good defender, yeah. you know, pass first uh, point guard. I, I didn't necessarily uh, factor in how beneficial, you know, that uh, that deal could be uh, for the Celtics, you know, a, as well as the Lakers. The Lakers obviously get the best player, but the Celtics will get assets that, they uh, love assets. you know, could definitely gel much better, you know, with their current roster, you know, and put uh, – put them back in the conversation uh, to be competing for the East. So that yeah. um, is something uh, also to consider. Are the Celtics a better team without Kyrie Irving? Uh, I think this exact team that we saw this year, I guess, clearly, I guess so. But you take one piece, move it around, it could be a completely different look, and then that's a whole new team, you know? He's one of the best, most gifted players I've seen in person ever the stuff that he does on the court just leaves me you know mind boggled but sometimes things just don't teams don't fit they don't gel and clearly they didn't but if you move a couple other pieces and he stayed and you put another piece in where that piece left off it could be a whole different team so I don't know that's that's like a tough that's tough indeed you know it, it can be a catch-22 uh, for me the Celtics are a better team this Celtics team is better without Kyrie Irving yeah. okay because for whatever reason uh, you know, he was not able to, to motivate, to inspire, to galvanize uh, the young players on this roster to get everyone moving in the same direction. Instead, we had five uh, players on the court, it seemed like moving in five different directions at time. And so, you know, in that circumstance, somebody's got to go. You know, and, and Kyrie seems to be the one most willing and apt uh, to hit the road uh, so he can get gone. Um, you look at the overwhelming success story of the Toronto Raptors. Is that because they got rid of Coach of the Year, Dwayne Casey? Is that because they got rid of All-Star, uh, DeMar DeRozan? You can go ahead and chime in. I think that the coaching change, maybe, he seems, he's, I mean, they're in the NBA Finals. He's done a great job. Shout um, out to Nick Nurse, yep. Yeah, hell yeah. But um, I think also it's just the fact that Kawhi Leonard is an absolute animal. And that team, I like their depth. I've been saying this all year long. I like Toronto's depth. I think that they're like a... They're one of those teams that, even on paper, it doesn't really, they're just, they're real. They all have their roles, their role players. They don't mind where they're at. You know, you got Sayakam, who's, who's rising P. up. Yep. Yeah, oh yeah. So, I think that it's a little combination of both. The head, the head coach is great. I mean, they definitely won that trade, it looks like. I mean, DeRozan, I like DeRozan, but Kawhi Leonard is like playing out of his mind. But, I mean, it was a, it was a scary trade at the time because, one, you don't know what he's going to come back like after that injury. Indeed. Only and played nine games. You don't know if he's going to stay. So you give away a guy on, like, DeRozan was on, like, a huge deal. He's going to be there mm -hmm. for a guy that could walk this year. We'll, we'll see. I mean, they made it to the NBA Finals, so it looks like the trade was worth it already. You, you make it to the Finals, uh, you, you, you can't argue with that. But at the same time, you know, when you, in order to put the pieces in place, um, you know, we talked about uh, Dwayne Casey, who is an outstanding coach and one coach of the year. You know, uh, Mr. DeMar DeRozan, a perennial all-star, uh, Team USA member. Um, you know, you, you really had to, um, to pull the trigger and, and switch things up, you know, based on the fact that it looked like the Raptors, as constituted, had maxed out. You yeah. know, they were the number one seed uh, last year, and I, I think they were the number two seed the year before that. Yeah. You know, and, and in successive years, you get swept out of the playoffs. You know, so if it ain't broke, you don't need to fix it. But if it, if it looks broke, you know, then you might need to fix it. Keep doing the same thing every year and, and you're know, not getting anywhere. You know, I mean, what are you going to do? I mean, you got to do something. That's the definition of insanity. You yeah. know, same thing over and over again, expecting to get different results. You know, and so the Raptors, you know, saw it going in, direct, in that direction, made the move, you know, and, it, and it's paid out in gold right now. Um, whereas the Celtics, uh, and the reason I think they're better without Kyrie Irving, I think we're starting to see the writing on the wall. You know, uh, he's been here two years. Uh, granted, he didn't play in the playoffs last year, but he, he's been here for two years, you know, and he had all of this year, no injuries, you know, no movie productions, you know, uh, and, you know, they, they never really kicked in the gear, you know, for any long and, and uh, notable period of time. 
you know, here and there. They got their acts together. But when, when it mattered most, and, and really for the majority of the season, okay, they, they were not what the Bruins uh, have been in the playoffs and apparently in the regular season. They're number two overall seed. They, they have not been a team with a capital T, you know. And so for that reason, I think they're better without them. Um, and, you know, you build with those other guys who have bought in the future, and who have bought in the past previously, excuse me, and are more inclined to buy in uh, in the future. Speaking of superstars, speaking of superstars, excuse me, and teams, uh, are the Golden State Warriors a better team without Kevin Durant? Uh, I don't think so. I think that Kevin Durant, just by a smidge, is the best player in the NBA. Right, Kawhi's right there. But Kevin Durant was people are forgetting. Before he got hurt, he was averaging like 40-something points in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. Like, he's literally virtually unstoppable. Indeed, indeed. Uh, I, don't, I just think that they're, they're disgusting either way. I think with him, they're better. But I think without him, they're still championship caliber contenders. I think that they're going to win the championship. Okay, so you, that, that's where I was going. You, you've given your, your championship prediction. Uh, KD will not play in game one tomorrow. He's going to travel with the team to Toronto. Uh, who knows if he will play in game two. Uh, but for me, on the record, I'm going to say it like I feel it. You know, I believe KD's healthy enough to play. And I believe the six-game uh, winning streak, uh, the resounding, uh, outstanding, uh, unheard of, uh, six game winning streak that they've gone on in the conference uh, semifinals and conference finals without Kevin Durant is a large reason, a large part, you know, of this continued delayed absence. You know, he had, um, you know, I think it was a calf strain. You know, we're not talking about some, by the way, Boogie Cousins is questionable uh, for game uh, one. Uh, Boogie Cousins had a quad tear. That's crazy that he's already coming. Oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and Boogie Cousins is not a small, small no. uh, human being. I think that's just a, there's no. Boogie Cousins is 6'10", uh, 285, you know, plus. And he had that's a quad insane. tear in the first round. And just over a month later, you know, he's questionable for game one, trying to come back. Kevin Durant had a calf strain. Okay, we're not talking about any, you know, that's like a grade... One or that yeah. might be that might be a great point five. Like, his little toothpick legs, you never know. True, true. But, uh, but this is the NBA Finals. Right. This, is, this, is, this is the NBA Finals. And, and Kevin Durant, he loves him some basketball. Oh, for sure. Okay. In the summer, in the winter, in the spring, in the fall. Yeah. Okay. I think that they knew that they could get through Portland without him. I think Portland was lucky to get there. Don't don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to knock Portland, but yeah, I yeah. think they knew even without Durant. We can absolutely beat Portland. Yeah. Maybe they didn't think in four games, but they thought we're going to keep him out as long as we can to Indeed. keep him rested. We don't need him to take care of these boys. Now, Toronto, I think they are in a whole different class than Portland. I think Kawhi is unguardable. So I think that maybe he doesn't play in game one and they'll see how it goes, but I think that he absolutely will be back in the fold. I'm not saying they need him, but I think that if he's healthy, you got to you gotta throw him out there. Agreed, agreed. We want to uh, give a quick special thanks to Rosario that's in the studio helping us out to produce this show. Thank you very much. It was on very, very short notice. So, uh, you know, uh, a lot of the people coming together here at the Cape Cod Media Center so that we can, we can do these different productions. Thank you. Um, Golden State Warriors are, uh, they're not better, obviously, without Kevin Durant uh, because of all the points that you mentioned. Uh, Quick shout out to my man Darby Lyons. You can't see him, but he's in the building. Uh, definitely go ahead and check out Galactic. We mentioned it last show. We'll mention it every show as long as he's here. Uh, it, he does a great job, and uh, definitely go ahead and check that out. But uh, Mr. Kevin Durant, uh, he is going to make any team that he plays on better. Uh, yeah. Obviously because of his skill, uh, but we also have to talk about his will. You know, we talk, this is a man that loves basketball. This is a man you don't have to, to question, you know, if, you know, and he obviously he went through some issues this year with his family, losing uh, close people close to him. You know, he's obviously gone through issues in his career, people heckling him, you know, all of uh, the naysayers, you know, talking after he went to Golden State. But at the same time, you know, when he steps onto the court, when he steps in between those four lines, okay, this is a junkyard dog. He doesn't want to lose. You know, all day, every day. In every single circumstance. Yeah. Okay. And so that's why the Golden State Warriors are not a, you know, he's going to benefit and make any team in any circuit because of his mentality and his approach 
okay? And if Mr. Kyrie Irving had that same way about him all the time, then I'd have the same feelings about him with the Celtics and whatever other team he goes to. Uh, since he does not, um, you know, my feelings are going to be different. Okay, um, so uh, we saw the Toronto Raptors. Uh, they knocked out the Milwaukee Bucks uh, in six games. Series didn't go seven games. I gotta ask you, did, did, did the better team win this series? Uh, I was saying pretty much for most of the regular season, if it's not the Celtics, I believe it's gonna be the Raptors. And I think, yes, I think Milwaukee's almost there. They were disgusting all playoffs, but the wheels fell off right at the end. And I just like Toronto's depth. I mean, Milwaukee has some great depth too, and they're really long, but I just think that that Toronto team is like very well built. If you if a guy comes out, the next guy in is very similar to who just came out. It's almost like it, it was kind of Patriot like. It's indeed, like you know, indeed. we'll make this guy into this, and all we need for him is to. It's what the Celtics didn't do. They did the complete opposite. Celtics, the wheels fell off. They had people come in. The rotations were all screwed up. I think both teams, Milwaukee and Toronto, are, are very good. But I think, I think the better the better teams there, they're in the play, they're in the finals, and Milwaukee's not. They're the better team. Uh, Milwaukee did have the best record overall. That's true. Um, in the NBA, they also have uh, a player many people believe is the favorite uh, for league MVP. Um, they did have two All Stars yeah. uh, this year. Uh, it wasn't just Giannis, Chris Middleton. He's going to uh, get paid. Also uh, an All Star. Uh, and, and a former Rookie of the Year, you know, in, in, in Mr. Brogdon, uh, some other um, talented players, uh, Bledsoe, uh, good bench, Ilya Sova, uh, Pat Conata, who, who yeah, we've mentioned. Crazy. Um, so I, I don't necessarily think the better team on paper won, uh, but to your points, I think the better team, team with a capital T, uh, definitely did win in terms of how players stepped up and, you know, how they battled uh, together. We have to mention the outstanding pack line defense uh, that they played against Giannis. I believe Giannis' still goal percentage during the regular season was uh, at or above 50%. Uh, his yeah. still goal percentage when Kawhi Leonard was guarding him uh, was under 35%. It was either 35% or below, okay? And that doesn't have to do with, you know, how great a, a defender Kawhi Leonard is, and he's certainly an outstanding defender. It has to do with the Marcus Sauls of the world, okay, the Spicy Peas, okay, Siakams, okay, and the Serge Ibaka's, okay, playing that pack line, help side defense to wall up and just absolutely take away the paint under any and every circumstance, okay? And, and you know, on paper, you know, Marcus Saul, he's, he's not a spring chicken. You know, he and his brother, they're, they're not, you know, Marcus Saul, you know, he's he's in the the twilight of his career. Yeah, still you know, got it. It's been three or four years since he won Defensive Player of the Year. Now, Spicy P, Siakam, he's on the rise. He's real. He's somebody that's going to be, you're going to be seeing him on Eastern Conference All-Star uh, rosters in the near future, if if Kawhi stays or not, okay? His, his star is definitely rising. And Serge Ibaka, again, a veteran, you know? He's put, tough. You know, played with uh, Mr. Durant and Mr. Westbrook back in the day in OKC. But again, that, that, that was five, six, seven years ago almost. Yeah. You know, that, that, he's that, still got that, it. That, 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 that wasn't, you know, that wasn't yesterday. No, no. Okay, but um, those guys combined uh, also throw in a Mr. Kyle Lowry, uh, exercising, if you will, those playoff demons, getting himself yeah. back in the right track. Uh, Silence the Fred, haters. Fred uh, Van Vliet. Fred um, Van Vliet. Did you see the stat of him after the birth of his son? He was, he's missed like three three-pointers. I think he's been 14 for 17 from three. He has been, he's shooting like unreal numbers. You gotta check, I don't have the numbers right here. I wish I did. His numbers after the birth of his son are like, ins it's insane. I've never seen anything like it. Sure, I, I think that, you know, he's uh, close to, you know, at or over 80% from the three. Yeah. Um, and uh, that, woo, On 17 taken, on, which is insane. So you have to factor all those things in. I think, again, uh, the Toronto Raptors were not mo as talented a as Milwaukee, but in the arena, uh, under the bright lights, they certainly uh, proved that they're uh, the best team in the Eastern Conference, deserving to go to the Eastern Conference Finals. And again, you know, you look at a team that just seems to be, you know, you look at a team that has all these stars versus Toronto with their one star, but I think that's kind of misleading. I think Toronto will give the Golden State Warriors uh, a, a tough series 
Um, I'm interested to see if they can push it to six or seven games. Yeah. You know, uh, I agree. You know, I like what they did against Milwaukee, but against Golden State, and that has nothing to do, you know, with them, you know, and their four and five All Stars, and you know, you know, three championships in the last four years. It has to do with the level of basketball that they're playing right now, with or without Kevin Durant. Um, they're playing an exceptionally high level. Um, you know, they they have turned the clocks back to the '73 and uh, '19. You know, yeah. that's that that's how they're playing right now, and, and that team, you know. If David Stern, excuse me, David Stern, if Adam Silver, you know, doesn't suspend Draymond for game five, okay? Yeah. Uh, I, I'm, I'm sorry, you know, all the good people in, uh, in Cleveland and Ohio, uh, but that 2016 championship is going to Golden State, okay? That, uh, you know, game seven, you know, you, you beat them in game seven, but they had, they had their full team for all seven games. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't think it would have went to seven. And that's the, the Warriors, uh, that w the Golden State Warriors that we're seeing right now, um, that they're just exceedingly dangerous. But again, you know, I, I counted Toronto out against Milwaukee. I'm, I'm not going. You know, I, I'm I'm hoping that a, that mentality, that that blue collar that, that that we've been talking about, can make it a fight. You know, and, and, and there's a difference between lose. You know, between losing and getting blown out. Yeah. You know, if, if they lose in five games or six games, but all these games are close, they're losing. You know, by under seven points. That's a great achievement for Toronto. I'm sorry. Yeah, for sure. You know, against this Golden Boy State team, if you're battling them game in and game out, and they just have a little bit more in the tank, which they obviously do than you, then there's no shame in that. You know, whereas, you know, again, if, you, if, if, it's, if it's a lopsided, one-sided affair, you know, then, then they would have not represented themselves, you know, as well as, um, as well as they could, in my opinion. That, that, that's how I'm gonna, I'm gonna look at it. Um, is Kawhi Leonard the best player in the NBA? Just a smidgen below Kevin Durant. Very, you can make the argument either way, but the stuff that Kevin Durant, everyone is forgetting what Kevin Durant was doing because he got hurt and we haven't seen it in a few weeks and people forget short-term memory. But I think Kevin Durant is just a tiny bit better, but Kawhi Leonard is, he, he's gotta be probably the best two-way player in the game. Indeed. Absolutely. Indeed. Uh, he's right there. You can make an argument either way. I think that Kevin Durant is like, if I'm rating them for NBA, I'm, I'm saying that Kevin Durant is a 99 and Kawhi is a 98. Throw it like that. Why is Steph Curry not in this conversation? Uh, he's just a little overshadowed by Durant's numbers are definitely a little, a little better. I think Curry, he's, he's right there in the conversation too, but He's just not quite as dumb. He does it in a different way. I don't know. It's hard to articulate. Okay. Uh, and maybe I'll just chime in. Uh, I, Steph Curry's not in the best player on the planet conversation because Steph Curry is 6'3". Yeah, uh, yeah. Kevin Durant is 6'8", 6'9", 6'10", whatever, you know, the number. You know, LeBron James is 6'8", and uh, Kawhi Leonard is 6'6". This is the point that Isaiah Thomas uh, brought up. I, Isaiah, uh, we don't even... We, we don't even have enough time in three episodes to talk about Isaiah Thomas' contribution to the game uh, in a number of levels. You know, Chicago kid uh, won a gold medal on the Olympic team, won a championship uh, at University of Indiana under the leadership of Bob Knight, obviously won back-to-back -back championships with the bad boy Pistons in the late 80s. Um, his, his legacy gets tarnished in large uh, part, in my view, because of his beef with Michael Jordan. You know, he was excluded from the 92 Dream Team uh, because he and Michael Jordan did not see eye to eye. Um, and so people, you know, I think, you know, Isaiah Thomas was a monster at, at, at six foot one, you know, could do it all. Pat Riley talks about this in terms of, you know, his play in the 80s was some of the best point guard and just, you know, that we've seen in the NBA. Back to Steph Curry. I, it just, I'm so glad he brought this point out. Why is Steph Curry not considered by more people to be the most the best player on the planet. And I think this last six, this 6-0 six run that Golden State Warriors have made since Kevin Durant has gone out has reminded people that Steph Curry is a two-time back-to-back MVP. Yeah. He didn't win one MVP. He won back-to-back. -back. And the second one was unanimous. Okay? And because, you know, Steph, you know, he's a jovial person. Yeah. You know, a great point that was made about Steph Curry that, that helped me very much uh, is that Steph Curry, I mean, you can see, Steph Curry plays with joy, you know, yeah. rather than playing with anger. Yeah. You know, whatever, whatever your mentality is, you know, but that that's something that that hit that smile, that enthusiasm for the game. Uh, Steph Curry weaponizes that in terms of how and just he's out there having a good time like, you know, he's on an eighth grade basketball team, right, you right. know, playing in, in, in his first travel tournament. 
you know, as a two-time defending MVP. But back to, you know, I think, you know, we need to, you know, in the basketball community, we're having these conversations about who's the best player in the world. Steph Curry's name needs to be in that conversation more than it, than it currently is. Uh, and if he keeps winning championships, and, you know, they're the favorites to win the championship this year, and, and what they're showing, you know, with, what they're showing in this playoffs is even if they lose Kevin Durant, which is our next, you know, even if they lose Kevin Durant, okay, I think they're going to be the favorite next year. Oh, yeah. To continue winning championships. You know, so the four and five years, you know, obviously Kevin Durant going there, you know, we don't, you know, but, um, you know, Steph Curry is looking, you know, he, he could retire with, with John John Havlicek level championships. Oh, yeah. Okay. Shout out um, uh, and, and uh, you know, a quick, uh, we, we, we did lose a, a, a great. Rest you in know, peace, Honda. Rest in, in, in indeed. Uh, you know, but John Havlicek's a player, you know, that, that won championships with and without Bill Russell. Yeah. You know, he, you know, everyone talks about Bill Russell's 11 championships. John Havlicek, I gotta look at, you know, it's like seven or eight championships. Yeah, it's, You know, and the last two in 73 and 75 was all Hondo. Right. Okay, so Steph Curry, you know, he, he, he is, um, he, he's right there in that conversation and his play ha- has shown that. You know, again, I don't want to keep, you know, but, you know, when, when the bright lights are on and, and guys go off and, and, and they shine super bright, you know, you know, that that's not, you know, seven for 22. Yeah, I'll say this. That's not I seven think, for 22 in games, games four and game five. Yeah, I think that Steph Curry is definitely the most fun player to watch. Indeed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, some, some of the stuff that that guy does is just like, like what the, the passes. You know, but the, some of those three pointers, he, yeah. he's shooting them from the logo almost. He's just the way that he, he he's a, he's not a spot up shooter. He can shoot from anywhere while moving at like a very like crazy speed. It's he's unbelievable. He's he's definitely the most fun player to watch, but that doesn't always translate to being the best player for some reason. Uh, you know, the, the, the argument that I've heard that resonates to me in terms of you know Steph Curry and and being in the the best of the GOAT conversation is, you know, the Tom Tom Brady versus Peyton Manning conversation. Yeah. You know, that, you know, every Tom Brady is the greatest of all time, you know, and, and that has to do with Tom Brady is much more of a winner than Peyton Manning was. Absolutely. Even though Peyton Manning won two Super Bowls, but, you know, Tom Brady's got, what is it, it's six now? It's six, I yeah. Can't even count. It's can't six. Even count we we had to, you know, in doing the research, you know, 02, 04, 05, you know, um, 15, 17, and 19. You know, and there's a there's a 10 year gap between those three yeah, between insane. those two three peats. It's insane. I didn't I didn't recognize that. It's so the best. That, so that's why you know when we're talking about you know the greatest of all time and, and, and Tom Brady, uh, it, it's, bec- it, it, it's the winning. You know, so Steph Curry, if he continues to win, um, then you know he he should just the way that you know Tom, and, and it's it's almost unqu- Tom, uh, Tom Brady greatest yeah, of all time. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, obviously in New England, we but you know the reason that Peyton Manning has really fallen you know a, a good ways back in that in that debate. Is because of you know six versus two. If Tom didn't keep winning, the conversation would still be living on. But this last this last one sealed the deal. In, I mean. Indeed. And so we're looking for uh, you know Steph. Uh, if he continues to win, it has to be. Okay, we're um, going to switch it over uh, a little bit of uh, Red Sox coverage again. You know the baseball people out there. You know the uh, the Chris Monizes, the Mike Brijos. We you know and anybody else. You know you're more than welcome to come on the show. We we we'd love to have you. Uh, but you know admittedly we're not uh, two baseball people. But we do need to. You know, to do a little uh, local coverage. Obviously, when you have the World Series champions, you know, in your in your hometown, you need to you need to discuss <laughs> them. Uh, oh, so yeah. the Red Sox are six games behind the Yankees right now. You know, do you think they're going to catch the uh, the Yankees uh, in the American League East? Yeah, there's so much baseball left to be played. Indeed, I'm, indeed. I'm definitely more of a Sox fan than I am Bruins. I, I got a little more. Okay. I was at I was at the game in L.A. where they won the World indeed, Series th- th- last th- th- year. Indeed, that's been so. noted. You know, on this program, and, and that it will was be the noted. Best. It will be noted again. That was the best. <laughs> Um, I think there's there's so much time. That team is, if you look at that team, that team is deep. The pitching, I think they're they're doing a Patriot esque approach. The whole Chris Sale thing, they're babying his arm. They want him ready for. We're not even barely into the summer yet. They want all those boys healthy. They got one of the best pitching staffs in baseball. But you can't have the best pitching staff in baseball if half of your guys are on the DL. So they're just taking it, you know, game by game. Everyone was freaking out in the first two months because they were you know, losing a bunch of games. It's a very, 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 very long season. And six games behind the Yankees. The Yankees are all banged up. They're trying to get every win that they can mm-hmm. while they can. I'm not worried about the Sox at all. Yeah, I have to concur there. Uh, 162 games, uh, exceedingly long season. You know, one baseball uh, fan uh, described it to me as, uh, you know, you play baseball, 
Uh, obviously, you know, it's not, you know, you're not having the contact of football running around like basketball, but you have to be prepared to play every day yeah. for six months. When you're a baseball player, you, got, you play every single day uh, for six months, inside, outside, and uh, it's, it's definitely a grind. And we're just, uh, you know, first quarter of that long marathon, and so I definitely think the Red Sox, you know, will, um, you know, regain, regain their stride, their swagger, and, and be in the mix for the uh, American uh, League, uh, the American East uh, Division Championship, if not, you know, the, uh, the crown in the, in, in, the, in the American League. You know, once they hit their stride, particularly, you know, for, for Northern uh, franchise, it hasn't gotten warm yet. Consistently, yeah, yeah. You know, some of these other places, you know, you know, where you're playing outside in the sun all the, all day every day, it's a different, you know. So I think that's definitely going to benefit uh, the Sox as we, you know, hit that warm weather. A uh, couple more points uh, as we're concluding. Uh, Dustin Pedroia had a press conference where he announced he's stepping away from the game of baseball. Um, just br briefly, your thoughts on that? I think that honestly, last year when he had any value left at all, I I love Pedroia. Never forget all that he's done for the Red Sox, but with what little value had left, they should have traded him and gotten something back for him. He's, That's a good point, yeah. He's, he's done. He, he's done. He's, he's too old. And then, I mean, it doesn't hurt that you have Mikey Chavis coming up, and he's just cracking dingers all over town. True, he true. is smashing the ball. Yeah. So, I mean, if, if, you, if we're talking we want to win here, who would we rather have at second base? Mikey Chavis is just, he's the kid. He's, he's clearly the future. He's, he's absolutely Dustin, disgusting. A young Dustin Pedroia. Yeah, and Pedroia, I mean, he's, in, he's way too injury prone. He, he's washed up. He's old. I love Pedroia. But he's done. He's done. You know, and, and I, you know, again, from a distance, not, you know, having the baseball background, I think the, uh, the Red Sox, excuse me, they're doing everything they can to kind of keep him in the fold, yeah. you know, to, to keep him around, keep, you know, and he, you know, um, you know, one of the things Jeff Van Gundy said, you know, uh, is that uh, the hardest player to, to coach or manage is the declining star. Yeah. You know, and so, you know, in that play, you know, they still believe in, that they can do what they, that they once did. But, you know, the injuries have been piling up over the last couple years. And so this will probably be his, his last year in Boston, you know, to give him a good send off. But yeah. uh, you make a great point that, you know, ha had it been the Celtics and Danny Ainge, you know, he would have been dealt. He would have been yeah, dealt to get, to, to, to get some assets. Seriously. You know. Uh, and the Red Sox keep him around. I, I, I have no problem with that. We, what we also have to, to mention uh, while we are discussing the Red Sox is that uh, Bill Buckner uh, passed away uh, yesterday. Uh, Bill Buckner, obviously uh, famous uh, for the error uh, during the 1986 um, World Series. Um, again, but for me, uh, the Boston Red Sox and, you know, I've become a Red Sox fan. I'm not, I'm not from the New England area. I was born in, in New Jersey. I was born in the great state of New Jersey, you know, and, and, and frankly, you know, the Boston Red Sox being the last team to integrate in baseball rubbed me the wrong way uh, for, for a while, you know, but then as, as I get older, you know, and I become familiar with the culture and the tradition, I've become a Red Sox fan, you know, uh, and, you know, uh, David Ortiz, you know, love Dustin Pedroia, you know, uh, the championship in 04 and 07, those guys, Kurt Schilling, Josh Beckett, you know, I've become, you know, uh, a, a Red Sox fan, but uh, as a sports fan, you know, and understanding, you know, what it is, you know, my, you know, playing at the, you know, high school level, uh, you know, the, the wins and the losses. Um, but, to, you know, when, when you, when you are uh, linked for your entire life, you know, for one mistake, you know, with, with, uh, an 84, with 84 years of losing, you know, Red Sox didn't win a championship, right? But it was 84 years. Yeah. It okay. Long, it was a long and it, it would have been, 64 years close, you know, or 60, uh, 66 years had Bill Buckner not made that error, okay? And so what he, my point is in this long diatribe, I go on and on and on. The Red Sox showed class by bringing him back in 2008 after they won the championship in 07 and having him throw out the first pitch. That meant something to me, okay, on a personal level. Okay, so you want to talk about the Red Sox being the last team to integrate and, you know, these different conversations that we have, you know, concerning culture, you know, in, in, in sports, in the, in the intersection of culture and sports. Okay, the Red Sox bring Bill Buckner back to throw out that first pitch in 2008 and to say, you know something, it's over. It's done. Yeah. Now it's time to welcome the star who will throw our ceremonial first pitch on this day that we honor champions. And how happy we are and amidst this celebration and joy, this Red Sox alumnus has come back to join us.
He amassed Hall of Fame caliber credentials in his 21-year Major League career, and the Red Sox would never have won the 1986 American League pennant without him. Won't you please welcome him back to Boston and let him know that he is welcome always. Number six, Bill Buckner. It. He embraced that. I remember there was a Curb Your Enthusiasm episode, and he's they go to throw him something, and he he, he drops it, yep, and it goes yep. out the window. Exactly. He, he was used to it, and he he embraced it after a while. I'm yes. sure after it happened, it was pretty tough for him for yes. a while. But you know, time passes, people forgive, people move on. R.I.P. to I mean, he's a Boston legend, Indeed. for good or for bad. He's he's a Boston legend, and everyone who's ever been a Red Sox fan knows the name. Yeah. He still was a he was a. He won the batting title one year. Yes, and, yes. I mean, so it's not like he had a bad career. Those are the things that, you know, people need to also remember, you know, as you kind of reflect back on his playing career and, and, and on his legacy. Um, so, again, R.I.P. to Bill Buckner and, and shout out to the, Bill to, to the Boston Red Sox for bringing him back. Um, folks, uh, we have another great presenter that's going to come into the studio. Uh, but that's going to do it. Go ahead and comment, like, and subscribe as you feel the need. I am your host, the Cape Cod Kid, artist formerly known as Andre King. We are so fortunate and happy to be joined by Mr. Drew Pops, Drew Popolo in the building here, and we will see you here back again the next time. Today ourselves, just in the Mars pain we feel. Yes, sometimes we do hate ourselves, but each day we try to retake ourselves. So yes, we peace of souls do sedate ourselves. Just in the Mars pain we feel. Yes, sometimes we do hate ourselves, but each day we try to embrace ourselves. Yeah.